Joining us now, defenseman for your LA Kings, Oli Mata, all the way from Finland. How are you doing today, Oli? Really good. Thanks for having me. Actually, let me stop myself. Is it Oli or Ollie? Oli's good. Oli, okay, perfect. I've heard a lot of uh, pronunciation, <laughs> but whatever yeah. goes. Excellent. <laughs> well, listen, you're acquired uh, in a trade from Chicago. So first of all, welcome to LA, or to the Kings, I should say. You're not in LA. Not yet. Thank you. <laughs> um, you have some exposure, though, to the Kings. Uh, an article I read talked about your exposure to Drew Doughty a few years back when uh, when you were with the London Knights. Have you kept in touch with him? Was that the last time you really had any any time with him? I mean, what do you know about the Kings and, and the guys on the roster? Well, uh, Doughty's probably the only guy I know. I skated him a couple of summers. Last summer was probably the first summer I didn't go back to London with the trade happening in Chicago, so I didn't, I didn't have time. But other than that, it's been since I moved from the Knights to NHL, I went back every summer, and uh, we had a pro group there, and Doubts was part of it. So that's how I kind of got to know him a little bit. Doubts? That's a big name, right? <laughs> I guess that's what they that's what they call him there. That's it's, that's fascinating. I've always heard of him as referred to as Dewey, right, Carlin? Dewey would be one of his nicknames. I've definitely heard doubts as well, but I feel like that's not as mainstream. That's definitely within the group of, of guys or just kind of inside of the room, but doubts is definitely one of them. Okay, sure. I'm kind of embarrassed. Maybe I just made that up, huh? No, no, no. No, I, no, 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 no. no you definitely did it. You definitely did it. Speaking but, but, of nicknames, though, do, do you come with one? Is there something that the fans will be able to call you or something that, you know, is familiar to to you and and your people that have you know been following your career um it's it's been kind of weird everybody's calling me by the first name i think last year i was called the nats or O. usually that's that's about oh. it yeah very simple we won't forget that one. Oh, that's very simple <laughs> there you go. And i was gonna say the hockey uh nicknaming convention is to pretty much add the you know if you've got a guy like Dowdy, whose name already has the E at the end of it, right? I guess you would ordinarily shout it, shorten it to doubts like Greener or something like that. Um, yeah. But Oli, I guess, comes with the or with the it's E. It's built in there already. Yeah, it's perfect. That yeah. sound is. Yeah, even though it ends in I, the, e, the EY yeah. or the Y sound is in there. So you got to, it's like you shorten it the opposite way. He's just O now. So. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's the easiest way to make a nickname in, in the hockey world. You just add that sure. Y or you just make it. A, Make it end with an S. Yes, so absolutely. Multiple, uh, multiple publications stating that the expectation is that you will skate on a pair with Drew Doughty. Um, he likes to play 25, 26, maybe even 30 minutes a night. Um, traditionally in your career, you've played closer to 19 minutes a game, maybe. Are you looking forward to the pressure of, of maybe picking up some extra minutes, playing with Doughty, seeing that extra competition? Um, is that something that you're... Uh, excited to do absolutely um obviously just I, I feel like it took a big step last year um in my game and just uh felt like it just kept getting better game by game game and um you know you know just when, when these breaks come in especially in the spring and now now in the fall you have that six months that you really haven't had um can't remember when last in your career i think just taking advantage of it and and make sure you're ready ready for that have you decided on a number yet coming coming to the team have you talked to any of the trainers or anything about what you're going to put on your jersey uh yeah six that's not nice. really i'm not really particular about my number to be honest usually the pretty simple and smallest number that's available or something like that did you have a backup just in case your number six was not available? <laughs> well, I've been playing with two, three, six. I, I guess I had four at some point in my career too. So I, um, I wasn't sure what's available. That was uh, suggested and that's okay with me. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So you said you want the, the lowest number available. That's sort of a traditional defenseman number. Like you said, the two, the three. Now we've got Matt Roy in three. Um, previously, uh, Jake Muzzin and then Joachim Ryan was in number six. Is there a reason that you always like the lowest number? Was there a player that you idolized as a kid that had a low number? Or is that just sort of defensemen choose the single digit numbers? Um, yeah, I, I guess it just comes with the defenseman being a single digit number. It just comes naturally. Um, obviously, Blitzen was a big, big idol of mine. I love watching him play. Uh, I'm sure a lot of other guys can say, say the same thing. 
Um, he, he was definitely one of, one of the guys who's trying to always watch what he does out there. Just wanted to learn a little bit, a little bit of that. Just watching, watching games, you, his games always just like kind of eyeing him, what, what, where he's at, what he's positioning, everything, everything he does. The Kings don't have a ton of finished prospects or players. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Um, is that something that you pay attention to that you keep in touch with? Is there like a community within the league of guys that stay in touch and talk to each other? Well, with the, the national team and guys I grew up playing with, uh, Bristoline and Teravine and um, those guys I'm, I'm close with, like keep in touch. But whenever you see somebody, um, obviously you play against somebody, you, you come in and you say hi and, and sometimes go grab dinner, dinner and stuff. But it's, it's tough when you, when you're not in touch every day, you kind of, kind of lose that, uh, um, you don't, you don't, you don't talk to them as regularly anymore. So it, it's every, but every time you see him, it's like nothing, nothing happened. And it's just like, you, you know, the guy for 10 years. Does that cross over into people that you never got to play with either? Is that something that like maybe one of your idols or something that you would keep in touch or try and talk to them as well? Like say if you ran into Timu Solani or somebody like that in Southern California, is there an automatic finished connection where you're like, hey man, let's chat about some things? <laughs> I, I think there is a little bit. I, um, just, just being finished and playing in NHL, there's not so many of us. Obviously there's more more now than there was a couple of years back. But when you, when you see somebody, you always stop in and chat about things. And uh, I think my first year was, I didn't, I didn't know, obviously I didn't know that as be, being 19 and kind of growing up and then meeting guys like uh, Timon and Solani. And they just like talked to me, like I was one of them. And that was like the coolest thing ever. I'm like, oh, wow, I've been watching this guy playing for my whole life. And now he's chatting to me like I'm like, like, I'm like his buddy. <laughs> uh, let's talk real quick about you mentioned um you know playing well in chicago you go to the blackhawks the season is shortened obviously we have this prolonged off season or not off season but pause and then the bubble starts up and you guys uh, draw the edmonton oilers in the play-in round and i think i think most people assumed that edmonton would win but i think most people loved the fact that you guys won um Let's just start off with what it was like playing Edmonton in a in a round of the playoffs that never existed before. Was there any pressure on you guys? Did you feel like you were scrapping and fighting for a chance at the playoffs, or did it just feel like a playoff round? I think it did feel like a actual playoffs. Like it just you knew you're you win your end. You if you lose, you're out. And you've been obviously you've been working towards it for that when you got to know you got the playoffs, you still keep playing the season. Um, we, we got into Chicago. I think it was the beginning of July. You've been to the training camp for a month and a, almost half of five weeks. So, and you've been working towards, you don't want to go out there and play for a week, play a couple of games, games and go home. So you, you go out there and play whatever you got, whatever, whatever you got. And even, even without the fans, I think when, when the game started, you didn't realize it. It was just, it was just hockey. Like, like it was normally. Obviously, there's little things that that affected it when you don't have the crowd noise. But I I, I think as a emotionally, it was it was the same. That you, you did everything you could to win. Do you think yeah. you're able Sorry, to? Oh, I was gonna say. Do you think you were able to focus a little bit more or a little bit differently? just only having hockey in front of you inside of the bubble because Jesse and I were talking about your numbers before you hopped on the call here and you had six points, nine games. You're playing some of the best hockey of, of the season yourself. So was there a different kind of mindset just being there and only having the ability to just focus on the task at hand? Um, it, it gets tough because you don't want to, in off days, you don't, you don't only want to be thinking hockey. So you kind of, mm -hmm. At least what I like to do is just trying to get away from it for at least for a couple hours. You have your meetings, you watch a video of the other game, and then you watch a little bit of hockey. But at some point, you just want to make sure you get a little time off and don't overthink it. Um, uh, at, at least for me, it feels like I try to do that. And then when the game time, game, game time comes, like you're, you're fresh, you're ready, you're excited, you haven't overloaded yourself with hockey. And that's like the most exciting thing you have. And I, I feel like that's, 
that's what we tried to do. Like we had a, we had a good group of guys and it always you know, days off and after games, you try to talk about some, something else in hockey, just kind of get to know the guys a little bit, obviously you've been with them for a year, but like, like in, in a setting like that, when you, you just can't get away from each other, like that's like, yeah. that's different. And, and I think it uh, went really well for, for our team. We had a, we had a great group of guys there and I think everybody enjoyed being, being with each other. Edmonton had uh, McDavid and Dreisaitl, and obviously there was the debate of, you know, who's going to win the MVP, which guy's more important. But, I mean, Chicago wasn't hurting for superstar players either, obviously with Taves and Kane. Did you guys foster a sense of nobody believes in us, you know, it's us against the world, that sort of thing, heading up against Edmonton? Or or did you just go and play your game and trust that, you know, if you give your best, you have a shot? I think there was a little bit of that, the knowing – if that wasn't the case, we would have been out of the playoffs. Um, we didn't get the 24 team uh, playoffs that we would have been out. So we basically got another chance to get in. Um, and, and I think just having that to make the best out of it. Um, we didn't. We didn't think. Obviously, going into the series, we didn't think that we're we're underdogs. We knew how good we can be and how if we play if we play good, we can beat beat these guys. And uh, I think we felt the same way. Same way against Vegas was came short, but I, I don't I don't think at any point we felt like or we played the underdog card to ourselves. Uh, we're a pretty confident team. Going back real quick to saying you know you can't be thinking about hockey all the time, and it was kind of hard to you know get away with or get away from it while you're up there. What were some of the things that you all would do as a team to take your mind off everything? Were there video games? Were you, you know, playing soccer, baseball? I know you played both of those things growing up. You know, what were some of the the big activities that you would do to just relax and take your mind off everything? I think video games, I actually can remember last time I played uh, PS4, but in the bubble, I started probably two, three hours a day for the day. Which days games off. were you all playing? <laughs> We played Call of Duty. That was the that was the hot <laughs> game. I don't know what's going on right now. I, I actually have the PS4 after the bubble, so it's it's kind of funny. But uh, off the top of your head, do you know your KD? Oh God, it's gotta be like 0.5 or something. Oh, come <laughs> on. Okay, so there's room to grow. There's room yeah, to grow. I don't, I don't have PS4 fingers. That's not bad though. It's not bad. Yeah, but it, it was fun just playing that with the guys. That you got a poker night, and sometimes just sitting in the meal room just chatting with them and then they had these restaurants we could go to a couple of restaurants getting off taking off the just change the scenery a little bit golf yeah. simulators trying that a little bit um stuff like that i think nhl did a good job with what we had obviously the situation is not easy what you, what you can make in, inside the bubble and make sure like there's no um everybody's safe at the same time as and just trying to make it as good for the players as, he, as it can be i think they did a did a pretty good job with that and and uh it, it was uh definitely different than uh what, what everybody's used to who's uh who's the best at call of duty on the team <laughs> oh god um who's the worst then <laughs> probably me <laughs> I'm, I'm in there <laughs> but uh Deham's good um subi and uh Suban and uh, Neilander was pretty good. Uh, I think those are the guys. They always carried me, so I, I was I was happy to be on the team. Love who's the best? That. Who's the best poker player? Oh, uh, Delia. Came really? In, came and said said oh, oh 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 what what's the rules of this game? And then halfway in, oh yeah, yeah I was part of the poker club in university. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, not that's even pretty. fair. That's a good <laughs> poker player, I guess. Yep. They would yeah, want to exactly. make you think that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Uh, well, listen, uh, October is a uh, hockey fights cancer month, and there's no great way to transition to this topic, but we'll just sort of slide right into it. Um, you had a pretty scary experience. Uh, was about um, what seven or eight years ago now? Yeah. Um, I can't remember exactly. Was it might have been fifteen? Well, fifteen. Um, yeah. I, um, it was weird because like I didn't I didn't feel any different. It was a see like the training camp physicals. They found something in my in my neck little lump, and um, we didn't think any anything of it. It's just they just wanted to make sure that 
nothing nothing was going on and a month then uh, after all the testing they came in and said hey um, hey Ola, you have a you have a, you have a cancer you have a um, thyroid cancer on your right, right side of your th uh, thyroid and um, it, it was weird because I didn't feel any different I felt good um, I didn't feel like anything, anything was going on and it, it was pretty lucky when I when I think back how early they caught it with the um, season starting physical is what they do like how how lucky we are they're, they're doing that so they can find out these like things like this early so like I I can't even compare what I, what I went through to actually people who's who are fighting cancer because mine was pretty simple. I went in two weeks after, went in for the surgery. Um, they took it out. It took me, I can't remember exactly, about three weeks to get back in the game. Um, but I, I think mostly just what I remember how scary was it hearing that that word because you wouldn't think of anything like that would happen to you. Um, so. I, um, I, I think the toughest part was just telling your, like calling your family the first time. Like, I don't, I remember, remember thinking about it, like what, what I'm going to say so they don't freak out and take the first flight to you at Pittsburgh right away. Right. Yeah. How, how do you, I mean, feel free to not answer this if you want, but I mean, how do you start that conversation? Um, I, my family, for example, when they call me, the, if in a, the first sentence is always, everything's fine, but, and then yeah. say the thing. And then of course I, and then they get mad at me for not reacting when I hear the news. And I say, but you said everything's fine. <laughs> is that, is, is that the go-to move or did you just throw it out on the table? Um, I, I get what I remember, I guess I said was uh, just don't freak out, but I have this and mm -hmm. And I and, and I said like it, it's gonna be fine. It's early. Like there's, I'm um, I'm hundred percent sure I'm gonna get better. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be bad. That's I think that's what I, or something like that. Can really accept first, uh, yeah. something like that. I said and um, I was actually lucky enough my uh, that I played in London because my and I was I'm still very close to my blood family up there. So they were only five and a half, half hour drive away and when when I got the surgery I had somebody I had my blood dad there for me just helping out and uh just being there with me at, at that point that was uh, uh I think that was really important what was the support like from your teammates at that time too and you know cancer is something a, a few NHL players have had to go through and battle and had, did anybody reach out to you that you know had been through something similar or anybody on your team do something extra special or anything for you to help you get through that time? Uh, I, I had a lot of guys reaching out. Obviously your team was awesome. Um, everybody was there with me. Um, I remember, remember Bill Guerin's wife brought me some magazines. Uh, oh, I think it was homemade cookies and to the hospital. <laughs> oh. it, it, it was just, it was nice. Like everybody was just, making sure everything, everything was good. Um, yeah. but a lot of players I played with, with team family year before reached out. Um, I think it was awesome to see just how, how close the hockey community is. It happened uh, to you early in your career and, and relatively young in your life. Is this something that you now have to monitor for? Like, do you have to keep on top of it and make sure nothing comes back? So there's a five year period. I, I get the ultrasound. I think the first two years is every six months. Hmm. Uh, five year period. You got it after every year, and the, just taking blood work, making sure everything's good. Um, obviously, on the thyroid medication right now, and you get a half thyroid thyroid out. Um, but that's that's about it. Uh, uh, right now, it's more about just making sure you take your blood work every once in a while and see everything's good. Well, there was no good way to transition into that conversation. There's no good way to transition out of it, but we didn't want to end on that note. So uh, um, Chicago, Pittsburgh, and LA have combined for eight of the previous 12 Stanley Cup wins. You were on two of those teams in Pittsburgh. So obviously you've had a chance to play with a, a tremendous number of great players and a, and a huge number of guys with Stanley Cup rings. Now that you're coming to LA, um, Obviously, you haven't had a chance to play with Drew Doughty or Andre Kopitar yet, but 
I'm going to ask you uh, if you think Kopitar and Dowdy are better than Crosby and Latang, Taves and Keith. <laughs> you know, how, where, where do the Kings rank in that trio of, uh, of, of couple winners? <laughs> well, I'm going to go around the question a little bit here. <laughs> 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 but I, but I think when you say all these, all those players, I, I they definitely, definitely top of their class for the last. They've been on top of the league for the last ten years, at least, uh, and uh, it, it's showing with the cups they won, um, and it's it's not easy, and and just seeing obviously seeing with uh, Tapes King, uh, Keith, uh, Latan, Crosby, Malkin does every day, uh, it's. Pretty inspirational, just how, how they how they take care of themselves, uh, how they work every day. Just they're two pros, and you can, when you see them do this stuff day to day, like you you know, you don't question why they're so good and why they've been there. It's not it, it's not easy, and they they paid a price to be be the top players. Given how defensively responsible a lot of the players that you just mentioned on that list are. Um, was it helpful going up against Edmonton, a team with no defensemen and forwards that don't play defense? <laughs> <laughs> you can go around that question too, if you want. Yeah. I, just like, I just like poking fun at Edmonton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you know what? I think, I think we played, we had, we had four lines that played really good that, that series and, and pretty much the whole playoffs. And it's when you have those four lines, going and you got three deep pairs it's tough to tough to match up against that because it's like you obviously have your first second second line you could you can match up against that pretty good if your third and fourth line are still producing it's it's, it's really tough playing against and and i think that's that's what we're really good at I and mean, i think against edmonton um obviously our power play is pretty good penalty kill after the first couple of games we we made some adjustments and we, we got way better with that. And that's, I think that was, uh, that was a key, key part of the series. Well, we're hoping you'll make the Kings tougher to play against Carlin. Anything to ask Oli before we let him go? Uh, are you planning on improving that call of duty KD <laughs> <laughs> until you find yourself in LA? I don't think so. I, okay, so that time is done. And, you know, I'm not waiting for that. Uh, downloading the new update or whatever. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah. Too many something. gigabytes. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll leave it to that. <laughs> well, it's good to know your limitations. Ollie, thank you so much for joining us. And, and as we said at the top, uh, welcome to the Kings. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.